Hey friends, thanks for joining. I don't know about you, but summer means a lot to different folks, but for me, it means visits to the farmer's market. If I'm not growing it, I wanna find it freshly grown and locally grown. And that's one of the reasons I love to come to this place called Me and McGee. It's a special farmer's market. It's kind of its own little botanical garden with great ideas for using flowers. And then you have this bounty of produce. Makes my mouth water just looking at these peaches. Now, before we go any further, I want to quickly recognize our garden tour sponsors. A big thank you to Gilbert H. Wild and Son, Sun Patience, Arkansas Parks and Tourism, Ralston Family Farms, First Community Bank, and Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. These tours would not be possible without them. Check out our sponsor page on my website, pallensmith.com, for more information. Now that I've stepped away from those enticing peaches, why don't we take a tour of this really special place? It's a lot of fun to come here. And some of the reasons I love this place is that these folks support local agriculture. You can see right here, farm to table. The other thing is they're family owned. And also they're all about helping the community. It's a very busy place here. And it's exciting to see what they're doing with a lot of their flowers. So why don't we take a look, see if we can't garner a few ideas that we can use in our own gardens. For instance, take a look here. They just use a trough for, um, this is a watering trough that you can pick up at any farm supply. Gorgeous coleus coming along. And ah, I see one of my favorites here, Wendy's Wish Salvia. If you wanna watch the hummingbirds do flips, get some of the Wendy's Wish Salvia. People don't grow enough salvia, in my opinion. It's such a great plant. And then here's our little kufia. I'm gonna pinch this off. You've seen it at the farm before. This is a wonderful little plant that the hummingbirds again love. They love that tubular flower. And uh, that's what you see here. They'll pull the nectar right out of it. And this one's called the millionaire. And uh, again, it's one of my favorites, but just look at this Wendy's Wish Salvia here, and this will bloom right up until the first frost. So you get continuous bloom, uh, probably deep in the south, it's gonna be a perennial, but as uh, you move north, it's gonna become more of an annual, but as you can see, very worth growing. And then the mixture of coleus here, we've got three different varieties. This one has a, a, a much tinier leaf to it, which I think is beautiful texturally. It works so well with this one that is chartreuse in color. And then it echoes here with this one. Just look at the leaf combinations, how all those work together. It's really fantastic. Okay, let's keep moving along. Oh gosh, look at this verbena. Verbena rigida in full bloom. Again, a bloomer that will go all the way until next year. And the petunias all across the front. And then this is our sweet potato vine. How many of you grow sweet potato vine? I'd, I'd just love to know. This is uh, Ipomea. Um, this is one of the chartreuse varieties. You've no doubt seen the dark red ones, but look at the, fo this is largely foliage and look at the interest, visual interest that you get from it. Let's step over here. I just wanna show you some other examples of some of the things that I've seen here. I love the rustic nature of me and McGee. Um, you've got these little wonderful carts. Here's another coleus, uh, a completely different variety with this great scavola. Um, I know that sounds like a skin disorder, but this scavola is a, a wonderful uh, full sun bloomer that will take dry conditions. Uh, scavola is also called fan flower, and the reason for that is the little flowers, you can see, look like a tiny little fan. And this in my, my structure and the way I do containers, it would be a, you know, you have, your, you have your thrillers, you have your fillers, and this is clearly a spiller. Filler, thriller, and spiller right here. And I wanna draw your attention to this little window box. Uh, I love the mock-up window. And here they've got a theme of red going on, and we've got just a, a nice red uh, impatience. This is the uh, Egyptian star flower, or called penta. Hummingbirds love those red colors. Uh, here's a little euphorbia uh, that's blooming in here with it. And then uh, some herbs in the way of oregano. And I just love the way that they've just taken a very relaxed approach and grouped things together. Look at this drift of coleus here. Just a mixture of them makes a beautiful shady 
tapestry, really tapestry of texture and color that I think is really quite exceptional. What they have here is the benefit of these great big old pecan trees, which is uh, actually a source for one of their favorite fall products. One of my favorites anyway, that's the delicious local pecans. But in this shade, you can see that there's uh, a lot of other things going on. Right over here by their meat locker, you can see this is a full shade container using asparagus fern, coleus, also impatience, and another type of fern that you have over here with a centerpiece. And so this composition, if you look at this composition, it's really a great little focal point and doing very well in the shade. If we move over here, and I just love the way that you go in and out of these buildings uh, that have produce and flowers. Uh, this is a wonderful little composition in itself. Again, dominated because of the shade. We have coleus, these are some shade variety coleus. There are also sun varieties, as you may know, but it's also peppered in with some of the flowering uh, impatience ferns. We have the little maidenhair fern over here. And then on this side, they've got a mixture of tropicals and herbs, which I think is really cool. You've got uh, your angel wing begonias over here. Just look at this frosty foliage on it, which I think you could build an entire color palette just off the leaf of this angel wing begonia. I think it's fantastic. And if you look closely, you'll see the how the red the stems are and the underside of the leaf is red. And I, in the future, I want to plant more begonias because I think they can add so much to a patio or a, a porch or terrace. And they're really very easy to care for. Um, if we come along here, I want to just point out one of my favorite plants that I typically grow in the full sun, but you can see here it's thriving in this filtered light under this big pecan tree. This is called Persian's Shield. And what I love about it is it has almost a metallic quality to the leaf, um, but the deep purple and green is a, is a great plant to, to use in the garden. Again, I consider it a full sun plant, but hey, it's doing very well for them right here in the shade. Another variety of coleus here, and then we have um, a fig ivy, um, which is ficus pumilla. And for our friends in California and Florida and Louisiana and the deep south, we all know the green little fig vine that grows on the walls. And, but this is the variegated form of it where each leaf is surrounded by white. And just look how dramatic that looks and how it pops. You can see just a few of the solid leaves. There's just one little band of the green one in here, but look at its variegated cousin. Isn't that exciting? I mean, I, I think that this is a plant that really ought to be grown more. If you can't grow it because you live in a northern climate, you can certainly use it as a house plant and it's a, it makes a, a beautiful plant to keep in the house. Hey, to underscore my love of begonias and something I'm going to be planting a lot more of next year are just a couple up here I just noticed of these uh, dragon wings. This is a mixed uh, container of them. You can see there's a, a white form, uh, a beautiful pink form, and then here's that frosty leafed one there all stuck into a pot. So you can see they're a lot of fun. So why don't we step inside here and take a look. Oh, and as we go by, here's another beautiful angel wing begonia. It's that one with the red leaf and red, or red underside of the leaf and the stem here. And these are so easily grown from cuttings. I'm tempted to take some cuttings and stick them and grow them. Uh, of course, I would ask permission first. But why don't we come on in? We've seen a feast for the eyes with all the flowers and plants. But what about the feast for the tummy? That's one of the things I really love about this place. What they do is they focus on so many local farmers and carry their products here at Me and McGee. And I just was curious in your own community, do you go to the farmer's market and really try to support specific farm families? I'm just curious about that. Here they've got a wide range of pickles and chow chow. Here in the south we like to put chow chow on our field peas. I'm a big fan of that. They've got pork rinds, and right now, as you saw earlier, it, we are in high peach season, and it's hard for me to look at these fresh peaches without my mouth watering. We also have 
uh, the benefit of being at the peak of tomato season. And you can see a lot of these gorgeous heirloom tomatoes. Uh, these look like green Germans. Um, beautiful sort of salad tomatoes, slicers over here, even green tomatoes if you love fried green tomatoes and that's one of my weaknesses. And then you look here again you see more pickles, more relishes, apple butter, and of course the wonderful rice from our friends, uh, the Ralstons uh, that live just up the river who produce uh, nine different varieties of gourmet rices. Now I mentioned earlier that there's a um, philanthropic side to this family, which uh, heartens me, and I wanna uh, talk to Nina Collier about that, because she not only um, is leading the charge with this, she's also the one involved with all these beautiful plantings. So hopefully we'll learn a little bit more about those. Neva, this is one of my favorite times to come to me and McGee, because you have spread your magic around with all the flowers, Thank you really you. have a knack for it. Thank you. Yeah. Keeps me busy. Well, I can tell. <laughs> and they look so great. All the different Thank varieties you. you're offering today. Thank you. It's wonderful. So the people can come here and they can actually see some of the compositions that you've created, but they can also buy the plants. Exactly. They sure can. Well, it's, it seems like a natural extension to a farmer's market for people to be able to buy some plants. Earlier in the season, did you offer vegetable plants? We we didn't. The only thing that we offered was herbs, yeah, fresh herbs. I, I haven't right. I haven't gone down that path yet for the vegetable. Plant. You're trying to conquer all the flowers, <laughs> which is a big category, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Well, I have to say, I'm really taken away with the, all the varieties of begonias that you have. We ha we do, and I love begonias. Yeah, I yeah. Do. And you're mixing some things in shade that I think people don't really think of, but they're doing very well under these big pecans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exciting. I think a big part of gardening is experimenting, isn't it? Always, yeah. every yeah. day. Tell us a little bit about some of the community work that's going on here, and I think you're kind of leading the charge with the family on that. So we created the nonprofit foundation for my dad, Larry McGee, uh, to give back to uh, others going through the similar situation that we did. We targeted the caregivers. A lot of times caregivers are, are forgotten yes. because the patient, of course, they, right. they take a lot of um, energy they you know, do. and time. Huge resources. And they we're talking about he, he, we lost Larry to cancer. We did. The yeah. three, three years this September. Um, so we created a farmer's market challenge for the community to get out and actually see that we do have a lot to offer yes. and better uh, food options, um, bring awareness to the foundation, you know, t to where we can turn around and help hospice yes. as well. Yes, how wonderful. That is fantastic. Camry, do you like playing among the flowers? Uh -huh. You do. Do you have any favorites? All of them? <laughs> I thought. And what's your favorite thing to eat here in the farmer's market? Peaches, watermelon? Honey sticks. Honey sticks. Honey sticks. Honey sticks. Well, I should have, that should have been an obvious one for me. I should have known that. And what about the blueberries? Oh yeah, I love the blueberries too. Well, it is such a wonderful thing to see all generations of the family and now Camry involved here at Me and McGee. Yes. And the fact that you all are now uh, bringing other farmers markets and farmers into this effort to support those who have cancer and their caregivers. Right, yeah, exactly. That's, that is fantastic. I well, think so too. Wow, well, keep up the great work. Thank you, Alan. Yeah. If you know me, I can't stop talking about the flowers. So before we leave Me and McGee, I just want to point out a few of these beauties. Look at this gorgeous hardy hibiscus, hibiscus Syracuse. We've talked about some of these on our other uh, tours and look at the bud set on it. So this thing's gonna bloom right up until the early September, but isn't that a beautiful pink? If you grow this, I'd love to know about it. It's an um, old fashioned plant that's been around forever. And I think we need to be growing more of those old fashioned plants. If you agree, let us know. And then back here, I wanna show you this single uh, blooming uh, single meaning the flower is a single flower, single row of petals. This is a, actually a portulaca. And um, this is a great plant for full sun where you're not going to have a lot of um, opportunity to water it. So it's very forgiving about the water. So think about portulaca, a beautiful basket here. 
but I want to show you another one as we talk about some of these uh, plants that are a little more um, prone to grow where it's dry. Um, they've got a full uh, lineup here of succulents, and I just love this, this zinc dish that's already in a way designed. Imagine planting those in a very light soil and using that on a patio centerpiece, and these will grow for a long, long time, and there's so many different interesting textures and shapes and so forth. A great class of plants if you are just getting started in gardening and you're not prone to water, um, you can't go wrong with these. But come on over here. Um, I found something that I haven't seen in a long time and I want to share it with you. Uh, it's this little plant here, uh, which is another portulaca, but this one has a multi-petaled flower on it. And the thing that is so wonderful about portulaca is that it's edible. And it's one of those plants that you can grow in your garden. It has a, a wonderful flavor to it. You know, the, the leaves are slightly viscous, um, but I love them in salads. So add some portulaca to your garden. Full sun, not a lot of water, very easy to grow. And down here we have the, this red salvia. Again, we go back to how we started. The hummingbirds love it. So if you're trying to attract hummingbirds, uh, these salvias are fantastic for that. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this farmer's market tour here at Me and McGee. Uh, wonderful family, wonderful concept, and a lot of fun to get out and enjoy summer in places like this. It's just part of the summer experience. Hey, if you've enjoyed our tour, make sure you like this video and make sure you subscribe to our channel. And also, if you ring the bell, we'll let you know every time we post some new content. Come see us at Moss Mountain Farm. You're always welcome. And check out my website, pallensmith.com, for weekly information. Until next time, happy gardening. I gotta get back to those peaches.